Hello, my gorgeous Capricorns. I hope that you are all doing well. So, we are talking about the new moon in Pisces and the energies that will be coming in with it and how they will be affecting you. So we're going to do it a little bit different this time than usual. I'm just going to see what comes out in the cards and if I see um, an aspect, uh, something that is going on in the skies because there's a lot, um, <laughs> I will mention it then. Um, otherwise, we'll just let the cards do the talking. Um, so yeah, this is for Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising. Ooh. And um, I feel like I just want to let one more come out. Uh, and Jupiter. As my messages tend to be more... Um, Oh, look at that. Sweet. Okay. So, the bees, they can be sweetness, they can be work, treasure, and this is love. I feel, and, um, yeah, old love, right? This is Sappho. She was a poet from she was a greek poet and she was actually the first homoerotic poet <laughs> but um i feel like th with this rabbit reversed that there's a waiting period and there is a good reason for that um, I also see this um, Capricorn, right, like the workers, the work, the material, the practical, and then the Pisces, um, the more ethereal, um, spiritual, love, emotional, right? And there's going to be this need because we have a big concentration of energy in Pisces and a big concentration of energy in Capricorn, we are going to need to have that balance. Um, but there's a need to be patient too. Um, I feel like we're going to be making leaps in both areas, but there's this need to be patient and wait for the right time. Um, I also want to mention that we have uh, Mercury retrograde going on in Pisces as well. And that plays into this new moon in a big way. Um, if you haven't watched that video yet, I did a video on Mercury retrograde. It is a pick a card. I recommend that you do so. Um, I do talk about the energy that you, you are in as we're moving into Mercury Retrograde, so you'll know pretty quick if it applies to you or not. And um, I did a specific spread, so specific information comes out, you know, so because with something like Mercury Retrograde, there is this need to have a little bit better um, guidance, like specific guidance on how to make the best of it. Am I crazy or is um, Capricorn always sitting in indecision? Indy seems to come up for you guys a lot. It seems to me. And I feel like it's actually with purpose this time. And, you know, we see La Guna here, which is about the deep diving, right? And this new moon in Pisces is about that. Um, 
but where it, you know, and the Mercury retrograde actually, but where, like Merc the last Mercury retrograde we had was in Scorpio, and that one was more about facing our shadow side and coming to terms with um, those harder aspects of ourselves. This, I think, is more about finding those lost parts of ourselves, right? The, you know, that were actually, you know, like lost dreams, um, the inner child, the treasures. Las Cuna, one of the things is um, sunken treasure. So I feel this time around, and we're being a lot more compassionate with ourselves. We're looking within, yeah, this rabbit in reverse. And, you know, just being very sweet, right? All of these cards have a, a sweetness, a tenderness. And I feel like, you know, this big ball here is the past, right? And as we look at our past, we find our future right? We find those lost parts of ourselves that make us who we are, and it will help us to move into it, make a decision about the future. Because Mercury Retrograde is all about, you know, the revisioning, the refocusing, the review, right? All, every re you can <laughs> think of, that's what it's about. And I want us to see this new moon in Pisces and the Mercury retrograde um, because they are very intertwined um, as kind of a rainy day. And really, you know, take our time with looking at things. Like, look at the details. Especially with important projects. This is treasure too. These, the, uh, so we've got sunken treasure here and then we have treasure here. So I feel like, you know, this has multiple layers, this bees card. And yes, it's about work. It's about inner work. It's about the outer work. It's about finding the sweetness in life. It's about finding uh, the sunken treasure, finding the aspects of ourselves that we've forgotten that are important to our future. And self-love. Yes, I think this is about love on the outside too. Um, but it's very much about we need to be taking care of ourselves, right? On a, on a rainy day, we allow ourselves to take a nap. We fix ourselves a nice cup of tea and sit back and watch some TV. You know, what is it about a rainy day that gives you permission to, to do that self-care? And I think that we really need to be doing that. Yeah, four swords came out. <laughs> so, you know, the first part of this cycle i think we're really yeah nostalgia six of cups um we're really looking at the past <laughs> and then look at all oh, this aries energy yeah and like we are taking our time resting recuperating healing looking at our past and yes this could be some kind of um soulmate right especially with the emperor here but and we have the ace of wands at the bottom of the deck towards the end of the cycle after we've done our review we are going to um when Mercury stations direct, and of course it takes a little while to get the momentum going, right? But Mercury goes direct in Aquarius. And I think at that time, we there's a realization, we are able to, you know, 
all through this period when Mercury is in Pisces, our thinking is kind of clouded, right? We're, we're up in the clouds. We're, we're having to really do this, this balancing act between what is imaginary and what is real. Um, you know, letting our, our thoughts soar out and, you know, reaching for the stars and then finding what we can, how we can actually materialize that, right? That's why this action card, the rabbit making a, a leap is upside down because we have to kind of process a lot of this information. We need to do the digging. We need to do the reviewing, etc. And I think during those three days, that three <laughs> three days that we're in Aquarius um, and we have three swords lined up here against the wall. She's holding the fourth. That's her sword of truth, right? At those days we find our truth, we find the, the way forward and we start taking control and putting it into action here, taking a leap. Wow, that is gorgeous. Is gorgeous. Okay. Wow. I'm trying to decide if I want to, you know, when it's a general reading like this, I kind of like to leave it pretty open. But let's see what comes out with these cards. I might. Pull some more cards. See if we can get any more information. And like I said, you know, this could very well be um, soulmate um, connection and taking a leap in there as well because we've got this Sappho love here with the six, of, uh, even the three, the bees there. Um, and I see a hedgehog here, or a hedgehog-like creature. And they symbolize like, you know, tender, tenderness, open-heartedness, just really, and you know, it, she looks really content. I really feel like, um, you know, this balancing act, I feel, and yes, yeah, so we might be in a bit of indecision, but I think it's okay. We, we need to be there for right now. Capricorn, please. Capricorn, please. Let's do another round for Capricorn, please. Ooh, okay. And then, what else? Wow. Okay. Well, there we go. <laughs> you all got all the cards you need. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, this all that glitters, this came out for somebody. Um, who was it? Why came out first? Okay, so this came out. Yeah, this I feel like is going to be a bit of a challenge for you, the waiting, right? Because this came out sideways, kind of like a challenge. Um, being the observer, right? Being a little detached, watching for the signs, just observing. And this, you know, came out right over top of Indy here and the bees. So this could be, you know, this could be about work, your career. It could be about, um, it could be about anything really. <clears throat> but be very observant. And the why. That was the first thing that came out, all by itself. And this asks you to <clears throat> ask why. why. What are your, um, you know, and this will help you in your decision making. This will help you in going through those inner spaces. 
Why am I feeling like this? Why do I want to continue at this job? Why do I want this money? Why do I want this new TV, right? Anything that you're feeling, thinking, you know, obsessing over, desiring, you know, any of these things, ask why. Get to the motivation, um, the underlying meanings of things. And this is going to give you a wealth of knowledge and help you get to the bottom of decision making. <clears throat> then we have all that glitters in the reverse and round and round. And I kind of feel like, let me see. I want to move these cards a little bit, see if we can't. Get more in here. Get another layer. I feel like I'm going to leave that one up there. Yeah, that works well enough. Well enough. Okay. So... I feel like this all that glitters, right? This is walking away. And spirit might actually, you know, wants you to walk away from all that is inauthentic, all of those things that we want just because You know, it's the, the keeping up with the Joneses kind of thing. And it keeps us stuck in a karmic cycle, right? If we can walk away from the masks, if we can walk away from the things that, that don't have a good why, then we can break this karmic cycle. Otherwise, we're going to keep repeating and keep repeating. So I feel like, you know, it's asking you to, de to detach from these things. Let me see that. I don't think so. Wants you to become the observer, even of yourself, right? Kind of looking within, watching yourself, asking these questions, and really getting down to what makes you you, right? Okay, now let's take a look at these. Mm, wow, okay. So this is almost um, the same. It's almost saying the same thing. Only this time, it's got this um, manifestation quality to it. And um, that's saying, you know, Matt, what do you want? What are your dreams because this new moon is a very powerful new moon and that manifestation keeps on coming up but you're stuck in a cycle that's keeping you from manifesting your desires you know the overthinking the desire I think in this instance, though, it's, it's asking you to look at things logically, right? The observer card. Look at things logically, and this is going to be hard. This is why it's going to be 
um, be, right? It's like this, imagine what I was saying, you know, what, letting the imagination soar and then bringing them into reality, right? What, what dreams do you have and how can you logically bring them down to earth? And what is keeping you from them? And as soon as you walk away from this all that glitters, and if you don't walk away, Spirit's going to step in and keep you from it, right? This is a protection message. So it's saying if you aren't able to do that for yourself, Spirit will come in and do it for you. But you don't break the karmic cycle. You'll... You know, because we, we keep repeating the same lessons until we learn them, right? So, spirit might tear you away from it, but you're going to have to take the test again, right? So, you might as well take spirit's cue here, and this even goes in order 44, 45, right? Think about this. <laughs> What do you want? What is keeping you from it? Because really and truly, um, anything is possible, right? But as long as you are holding in this karmic pattern, you don't get what you need. So think about what you want. Think about how you're going to get it. Walk away from those things that no longer serve you. They're no longer authentic to you. And as soon as you do serendipity the universe comes in brings all of the makings together to make this dream a reality this love this career the sunken treasure and this must you know this is what you are in indecision about right this all that glitters, this leaving this behind. And this is a big cycle for you. But I do see you doing it, right? And the universe is saying, when you take control, when you can take control of your life, and take that leap. It's catching you, right? That's what the fool is all about. Fortune favors the bold. So, yeah. This has been on the docket for you for a while, Capricorn. And I feel like, you know, you're this close. This new moon is really, you know, if you can harness the energy of it. Um... If you can go within and really, you know, look at the past, what part of yourself needs to go forward, what needs to be left behind, you can make, you can make this happen. And the universe is helping you. It's there to catch you. It's there to bring you all your dreams. You just have to break this, this cycle. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, Capricorn. I just, I apologize. I had gone through my spiel at the end, but you're not going to hear that. And then I realized that I didn't go over the bottom of the deck. And I looked at, you know, I was like, well, maybe it's not important, but it is. It is because we have bravery. We have the Ace of Wands. We have the Lady of the Harvest. You know, this is about change. It's about letting things go. And then we have Message in a Bottle. So, yeah, this is definitely telling a story right here on the bottom. Yeah, this is being brave. She's Joy Harjo, and I can't remember what the name was. Let me see. 
because I remember this being an interesting little story. Um, and it's uh, the meanings for this are plunging in, making decisions, and then fear. But you're, you know, and of course, there's a little bit of fear with the bravery. But Harjo, a common, we'll say Creek name, because I don't know how to pronounce the actual word. Um, a common Creek Nation name means so brave, she's crazy. <laughs> I think that's really cool, but... She had a very um, hard life, and she became a poet and um, an award-winning saxophone player and singer. So, you know, it's about overcoming fear, going for it, you know, even if it seems a little crazy. And this might even take, you know, letting go, right? This lady of the harvest, letting go of whatever does not serve you because you know it's also harvest right you it's i feel like it's kind of like that tilling of um the land right you have to remove everything to um, cleanse the soil and get it ready for the new crop and then we have the ace of wands here this fiery passionate new beginning transformation right there's this this change, and then we have a message in a bottle, and I'm going to read that one real quick. So, <clears throat> essential meanings are communication, a sign, a cledon, which is the ancient name for a spontaneous oracle delivered innocently by the speaker, pointing the way to your highest good. And so I feel like, you know, it's this serendipity and the message in the bottom um, are very um, closely intertwined. The, the observer, right? Watch for the signs, okay? That we you are going to get something that helps you make the sign, and you know, make sure you're doing your meditation too, though, right? I think about the thinker here. Um, so it says, Spirit sends you signs when you ask for them, when you believe you will, re will receive them, and when you allow yourself to become fluent in the language of symbols, oracles, and omens. They may come to you as a bird flying by, a logo on a truck, and a song on the radio. Expect confirmation that you're pointed in the right direction. Keep your ears open, for someone might say just the right thing that will give you the answer to your query. Today your message is this. Spirit hears you, and the reply is favorable. So nice. All right. I'm glad that I came back and did that for you very quickly because I feel like that was an important message underneath the deck. Um, so Capricorn, I hope that this resonated. I hope it helped. And if so, please remember to like, subscribe, comment, share. And until next time, much love.